Hi, everybody. Uh, so as introduced, Florent Grave and uh, I'm Jeroen Tichler from GeoCAT. We'll do a state of GeoNetwork uh, presentation. Oh, I need this one. So GeoNetwork is a, is the first, a first metadata catalog focused on, on geospatial uh, information, and we're more and more expanding into also uh, cataloging, uh, making, making available more open data that is not necessarily geospatial, uh, some more open data as well. Oops, I am uh, mistaken again. I should hold this in my hand. Uh, what is GeoNetwork? Just a quick uh, run through. It's a very comprehensive metadata editing and management tool. Uh, it's glue in the spatial data infrastructure. And the basic building blocks of the thing are metadata standards, uh, TC211 standards, DCAT standards for metadata itself, uh, but also exchange standards, service protocols, uh, mainly op uh, open geospatial consortium standards like uh, catalog service for the web, but also supported uh, with WMS, uh, OGC API records, other OGC standards are implemented in the product. Pro uh, project history, it started in 2000 uh, by myself uh, in uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Uh, its code and issues are on GitHub. We have over a thousand downloads per month, which is not necessarily a lot for a product, but for a catalog, I think it is. <laughs> um, we have an active global developer and user community. Uh, software is used, among others, in, in over 85% of national uh, Inspire endpoints for geospatial data in Europe, uh, but also used at national level in, in many other countries outside of Europe. And then at local project level, uh, regional level, like European level itself. It's an OSGEO project since uh, 2007. So we basically started to do the incubation process immediately after OSGEO was, uh, was founded. Uh, it is all about discovering and using data, services, maps, applications, uh, sensors, Etc. Uh, so really all about discovery and making things available in a way that is uh, not locked into one catalog, but a connected catalog. So making sure your catalog is available through service protocols from machine to machine, uh, as well as exchanging data between catalogs. It's also about metadata authoring and uh, management of metadata. Uh, so having forms, validation, uh, adding your services in a fairly easy way to a metadata record so that you not only publish about your data, but you also provide access to the data. It's about configuration. There's a big configuration uh, part of the system that deals with making sure your controlled vocabularies are available that you connect to other catalogs, uh, that you can exchange information, set up harvesting, uh, provide insight in what your metadata catalog contains, uh, provide interoperability, and more. So here's a screenshot of harvesting processes. What is actually coming in? How many services do those uh, data provide? How many downloads? Uh, but also when was the last run. Uh, you can schedule runs to connect to other catalogs and get some of that content in so that it is within your agency. You can show data that is actually coming from maybe a national or another regional catalog uh, and combine the things in one place. So you have a bit more uh, flexibility in what you show within your agency and not only restricted to what is in your agency. Our community gathers a few times a year. 
Uh, this is Italy, <laughs> where everybody is um, browsing for, for new data. Um, but we have a project steering committee, six members on it currently. Uh, we, we have a monthly meeting uh, with the project steering committee to just see where we're going. We make about 12 releases per year. Uh, that is usually a stable one and, and more of a, a developer uh, release. And sometimes we make additional releases when there's vulnerabilities in the code. Uh, we have two new committers over the last year. We make proposals. You used to do this on the wiki. We've moved that into GitHub project. Uh, there's a user list, mailing lists, actually user list, developer lists uh, in French, in English, in Spanish, but the most active one is the English one. Uh, and we're moving those to this course on OSGEO. And we have a coordinated vulnerability disclosure process that in case there is a vulnerability discovered in the software, we get notified on private mailing lists and we make sure that we have fixes first before uh, it's actually publicly announced so that we have a chance to update the software, uh, inform our customers, uh, and then make sure there's a release for you available to update your own catalog in time. So where are we now? Uh, version 3, 12 is kind of end of life. It has been sustained for a long time. Uh, through what we call GeoCut Find, which is our enterprise product at GeoCut. Uh, kind of the same code base, but with all the support around it. Um, and then we have a 4.2 stable branch currently, at .10 version, uh, also sustained through the same mechanism. So our customers pay us to provide service we use a lot of those resources to actually make sure we can do releases, do vulnerability fixes and so on. So to keep it open, but also to make it uh, commercially and, <laughs> and actually viable. Uh, latest branch is uh, 4.4.5, uh, which has all the latest and greatest new things, uh, but they may not be stable yet. We had... Uh, a user meeting last year, uh, I think it was November, uh, at the Inspire conference hosted by uh, the Flanders government uh, just to talk with people in real life and a number of them virtually uh, participating to see where we go with the roadmap. We do other events, we have uh, usually yearly Cold Sprint in Bolsena in Italy. Uh, this year we'll organize a bit differently, not in Bolsena this time, but usually we have at least that yearly event. Uh, we participate in OGC Cold Sprints, in uh, OSGEO Cold Sprints, and uh, usually we make sure we are at Phosphor conferences like this one, and we'll probably also be in, uh, in Belen. We don't switch yet. <laughs> so we have active proposals currently to move our mailing list to this course, uh, to integrate uh, Data Hub, which is a, a user-facing, end-user-facing front-end that uh, Florent will talk about more later. Uh, and we have uh, some approved proposals like doing our actual proposal and roadmap thing on GitHub instead of on wiki and mailing lists, which was a bit of a mess. Uh, yeah. So important, and I mentioned this in one of the first, but is the implementation of standards. And this is, I think, key to having a good open source project be accepted. Uh, we want to make sure data is open, is available, is shared through the FAIR principles. And that really helps if we implement OGC standards, uh, ISO standards related to those services and to the data formats. So one of the big developments currently is the OGC API record support, part one, which is the core. Uh, it's still 
not finalized uh, as far as I know. Uh, and there's also work on the part two uh, that we are involved in in, uh, in the specification development. So this is conformant to what, what is currently available in draft, uh, although there's no real uh, test suite yet uh, that needs to be developed. OGC API provides uh, many different output formats, HTML, like you can browse in the browser, uh, even do a search in the, in the HTML, um, supports XML output in the form of ISO 19139 metadata or 1153 metadata, kind of the same, but structured a bit differently. In JSON and uh, news feeds format, uh, DCAT format, Turtle and schema.org. We've been supporting the Inspired Directive by implementing the European Inspired Geo Portal uh, on a geo network backend that has been operational since uh, December 2022 and uh, really helps for reporting all the European services available uh, for Inspire. You can actually go to that portal and with a bit of searching, you may actually find a catalog that has all European Inspire data sets uh, with all the services provided by member countries I think you'll find like in the order of 300 or even 500,000 different uh, metadata records in that catalog. So it's, it's really big. It covers all of Europe for formal and, and less formal Inspire services. So what's new in Geo Network? Well, uh, Thank you. So yes. Uh, Thanks for the introduction, and uh, we have been working a lot this year to, in to update, improve, and enhance the experience that we want to provide with Geo Network. Uh, first, what is important is that we have uh, launched this new branch 4.4.x, which means that uh, we jumped from Java 8 to Java 11, so it's a big, uh, big gap and a big step for the project. And we jump as well to Elasticsearch 8, which is also a major release and we, which we brings new uh, capabilities in the, in the search engine. Uh, in terms of uh, features, um, from our, uh, so the customers, they, they expect new things from GeoNetwork. So one thing was to be able to embed uh, GeoNetwork uh, inside third-party websites. So the, the, the usual uh, interface is now exportable in web components. So you don't have to use iframe, and it's easier to customize the styles, the styling, and the configuration. Um, there is a map viewer with uh, WMS capabilities, and we add time and elevation because we have some catalog about um, ocean uh, data, series, etc. We improved the, the preview of the data uh, within the record page, so we can enphase on the data set a bit more than we, we did before. So we can see the, 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 the data, the WMS, we, we can see if there is a WFS, we can filter with Elasticsearch, so we can visualize the, the, the data directly inside of the record uh, page. Um, we facilitate a bit the creation of catalog of maps because it's not just about data sets and services. The, the, the catalog is also able to provide maps, so you can create your maps and create a metadata for them and share your maps within the catalog. Some improvement about the translation. Uh, yes, so now you, you can uh, uh, use uh, third party translation providers like Google Translate to translate your, your metadata because uh, in GeoNetwork you can have multilingual metadata but it's on the, the charge of the maintainer and with, with that feature you can, uh, you can uh, easily uh, export, uh, yes, translate your metadata. Uh, a better DOI support for having uh, uh, one link to uh, uh, yes, uh, DOI resources which are registered in a DOI registry with a unique identifier. And uh, during the, the user meeting, uh, people they really show that they expected 
uh, more DCAT, more support for open data formats. So a, a big work has been done in that regard to support more profiles, like country profiles, inspire profiles, and so on. So all these, these new things were uh, done uh, in, the, um, in the core. So uh, lots of new things, uh, improvement of the, 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 the schema, improvement of uh, the, the DCAT plugin. Uh, and uh, there was also work to, to, to see how we can scale geo network a bit more, like scale the index, Elasticsearch, and be able to, to answer to more requests. Uh, community work about translate, translating the UI, so all the strings of the catalog in different languages, so thank you for the contribution. And a big community effort also was to improve the documentation. So there is a new documentation based on a new template. So it's, it's m much better looking now to, to look for the documentation and we try to keep it uh, more up, up to date. Beside all this work done on the core, uh, last year we presented this project GeoNetwork UI, which comes along the need to have more uh, open data use cases within our catalog. So uh, one application within Geo Network UI was the Data Hub, and uh, th there was a lot of development within uh, this, uh, this, this uh, front-end application, which is an alternate search for Geo Networks. Um, and uh, there is organization pa pages, uh, I will show quickly. Um, there is quite a success, uh, so this is the Data Hub, uh, and it has been installed in a national uh, geo, uh, metadata catalog, so for instance, the Swiss National Ge uh, Catalog and the French uh, Nas National Institute who are relying on Geo Network use this, uh, this search for a more public audience. So there is a lot of things, it's data centric, so you have a lot of way to interact with the data, you can uh, you can cr uh, generate a URL to, to, fe to fetch the data, there is questions, a discussion, and there is a revamping of different things. There is a metadata quality uh, widget there, so lots of work. And what, what, what we, one which is quite important is that a Geo Network UI has been released as a package, an NPM package, so it means that any owner of a Geo Network catalog who would like to change a bit their uh, user interface could use this library to build their own custom application. And uh, there is one in production for uh, Lille Metropole here, and uh, you, can, uh, you can work on that if you want to. Beside the Data Hub, we have presented last year the, the wish to make an, a new editor, a simpler one for people who just want to, to provide very quickly some uh, metadata for, for open data. So we have done a lot of work, a big UX campaign, and some mock-up to, to try to make something which is uh, simpler, but I think that uh, metadata authoring is always a, a bit complex. So we have started the development of, of this and, uh, and, uh, and it's, it's, it follows its, uh, its progress. For the future, to, to conclude, um, so GeoNetwork 4 is facing two, two main challenges in terms of technology, so the UI is using Angular GIS, which, which is deprecated, and the backend uh, version of, of Spring, which is deprecated. So we are trying to figure out how we can move on uh, toward these two things. And uh, last slide is, uh, yes, some teasing about, because GeoNetwork is, um, is a search index and a search engine, there is a lot of noise about generative AI, so this, this, uh, this video just shows that on the left, this is the, the, the usual lexical search with the, in the index of Elasticsearch of Geo Network. And we could imagine to use generative AI to improve the search experience. So on the right is a technique using a generative AI and semantic search. So if you type a small word, you see that the, the results are quite similar. But when you are uh, requesting in a natural language, you see that uh, you can't do that in Geo Network, but you can still talk. What is great is that AI doesn't care about the language, so you can ask your natural language 
in English or French, whatever it returns the, the, the meanings. And what is great as well is that because it understands the meaning and not the words, it can really find what you, th you, you look for. So in, in, here, I, if I, I, I type bike, Elasticsearch find it. But if I type uh, mobility douce is uh, like uh, green mobility, it's lost because there is not this word in the metadata, while the semantic understand that mobility douce is also bicycles, etc. So just a teasing about what could be the next version of GeoNetwork, many things. Uh, so we wait for uh, your input, your expectation, and your contribution. And uh, let's see next year what uh, we will have done. Thank you. Thank you. We're probably moving the application to Spring Boot and, uh, and moving to Angular instead of Angular JS for the front end. It, it has been created because of this challenge of Angular GIS and also the need to address new use cases, uh, more uh, targeting open data catalog. So when we see the, the competition with uh, open data catalog like um, uh, Open Data Soft or things like that, we see that there is uh, a new, uh, yes, new, new paradigm about how the th uh, what is a catalog. It's more a data catalog instead of a metadata catalog. So all of this together, trying to modernize the, the use cases, the technology, this project was born. And we are discussing at the PSC uh, how it could evolve within Geo Network. And the Data Hub is just uh, an application for people who just want a, a public uh, ca catalog targeting more an open data audience without any expert uh, trying to play with the metadata, etc. So this is a bit the, the position of, uh, of it now. Um, yes. But, okay. Thank you. Well, I think, I think at the European Inspire Geo portal, uh, some improvement could be done in making it accessible for, for uh, the broader, broader orient, uh, audience. Sorry, uh, The data is there. Uh, you can actually find it if you know where to <laughs> look for it. Uh, but it's a bit, I think the focus of that particular portal is a bit from the reporting perspective and less from a user experience perspective. So I'm excited that there is that capacity. I'm a bit less excited about how it is actually uh, put open to the general public. <laughs>